G'day guys, Brett Havener here for Dara Australia. Um, today I just want to run through um, some tips on preparing rods for travel. Um, there's nothing worse than, you know, jumping in a plane with a rod tube, um, getting to your destination and then finding out that one of your rods is broken and then it can basically ruin a trip for you. So um, it's definitely important to make sure that your rods are packed properly and I'll run you through a few tips here to, um, to make sure that your rods get to your destination in one piece. So a few things that you will need is obviously your rod tube. Um, they come in a few different shapes and sizes. Um, they got square, round, um, accordion style where they sort of pull out and other ones that have sort of a door on the top. Um, this one's a sport tube, so it's, it's square. Um, I like the square ones because they accommodate really large guides. So um, if you're traveling like big blue water rods, um, these ones are really good. Um, often the rounder tubes, you sort of minim minimize the amount of rods you can fit. This particular one, I think you can fit 15 rods or something like that in it. So it's quite spacious. Um, I have been using um, the Daiwa rod socks. Um, these are really good because they're very lightweight. So some of your other rod bags are quite thick, so they're made out of neoprene and they actually do weigh a little bit. So a lot of the time when you're traveling to a remote location on a plane, you might only have 23 kilos of bag allowance. Um, so by using a thicker rod tube, you actually, oh, sorry, a thicker rod bag, um, you're actually minimizing the amount of weight that you can take in tackle um, and terminals and that sort of stuff. So using a really lightweight option, which still gives your rod great protection, I think is a much better option and it just enables you to take a lot more tackle on your trip, be a little bit more organized and potentially catch you more fish. Um, and also one other thing is I just use a standard towel um, just to give a bit of padding in there. So I'll run you through how I pack them. Um, one of the key factors is the fact that um, the lighter rods you take, say if you're going up north for example, I've got a couple of bait casters here and a couple of blue water rods, um, one piece and two piece. So a one piece rod for example, um, has a really nice soft tip, this one, a little bait caster. Um, so that is particularly fragile, um, whereas the other end of the rod is nice and thick. So this particular end is not fragile at all. So that can be banging up against the end of your rod tube, no worries. Um, if this ends, you know, if you've got movement in your rods and that this slides up onto the end of the rod tube, um, that's, that's potentially going to break, especially if you've got another few rods in there pushing that down. Um, so what you can do to uh, minimise that risk is say, for example, on a two-piece rod like this one, so you've got soft tip up the top, but then at the bottom end, you have a very, very thick part of the blank. If you actually layer those two items, so you have your tip sitting below, the thicker part of the rod uh, on your secondary rod. So, and you actually wrap those together with some rod wraps, like these ones. Um, if that hits the end of the rod tube, then this part is gonna take all the impact and you're not gonna have any issues with rod breakages. So I'll just r run you through how to do that. Um, it's fairly straightforward, um, but it can definitely um, save you some hassles on a trip. Um, there's nothing worse than rocking up and finding out you've got a broken rod. So with your rod tubes, uh, uh, sorry, your rod socks, um, just chuck them on the rods. So there are varying lengths. Um, a lot of our range of dial rods now are coming with these rod, rod socks um, as standard. So you attach to the rod series, um, the Zero, TD Black, for example, um, they all come with rod socks. Um, so it's really, really handy. Uh, makes it really easy for travel. Um, so slide them in like that. So these are the bait cast ones. As you can see, they're a lot thinner. Um, so they accommodate those smaller bait cast guides. Um, and there are some ones for spin as well. So the spin ones are obviously a lot wider to accommodate the larger stripper guide like these ones. So slide these on, it's very straightforward. And you can see they're made out of a stretching material. So they do actually expand a little bit and they will slide up over those guides. So they're not terribly thick, but they definitely do um, create a little bit of a buffer um, to make sure that you're not damaging um, your blanks um, with the other guides on the rods. So as you can see, the guide protrudes out a lot. It's quite a, a large piece. Um, so if that's sitting up against another one of your blanks and banging around in the tube, just bare guide on bare blank, it can do a little bit of damage. Uh, but just by putting these over the top, it definitely does alleviate that. Um, and obviously got a few two-piece rods there as well. So we do have just some butt sections. So the butt sections, we can just wrap them together with another another rod, um, rod wrap and then throw them in the tube afterwards and that's fine. So as you can see there, we have all of our rods um, in, the, in the rod socks ready to go in the tube. So basically what I'll do now is just get the towel and just roll out the towel. 
So this is just to add a little bit more protection and a lot of the times when you go on a trip you need a towel anyway, so it's quite handy. So say for example this one, this is that lighter touch of the rod which has a, a nice um, soft tip on it. So what you want to do is just lay them out and then get one of the rods with a heavier butt end, so a thicker butt end, so this is a Spartan rod and have that sitting so it sits just a little bit higher in your, rod, um, in your arrangement there so it just sits a little bit higher and then you do the same so this one here also has a, a softer tip this is another touch of the swim bait rod um, it's not as soft as that lighter one but it's definitely still fragile so you just lay that in a similar position and then this one another two piece rod um, which has a nice thick butt um, you can switch that around the other way and then uh, lay that in so that also sits nice and short um, you'll see on the other side here we've got that touch of the rod butt um, on the one piece rod which is quite thick um, so because that one is quite thick um, that's going to be butting up against the, the end of the tube so that's fine so what you can do then is um, just wrap the rods up in the towel so you can go either layered so you can wrap one and then go wrap another like so like that and then make sure that one's sitting at a good height and then wrap the third and fourth rods like that so it's so all wrapped up in that towel that middle section where all the main guides are um, there is more buffer in between so you're not going to be damaging any of your items so now with your rod wrap what you want to do is just wrap up the tips of the rod so you just want to wrap the rod wrap around the tips like that and as you can see there you've got your tips down here so you can adjust that slightly so you don't have so much space obviously um, the length of a rod tube however long it is there might be restrictions on, an, on a plane so you need to make sure that they are um, as short as possible while still maintaining, maintaining protection so you can see there you've got your um, your hard section there and your soft tips here so if something hits the end of that it's not going to do any damage to your tips um, same thing goes on the other end so because this one's a little bit thick I'm going to wrap this one on the towel like so and same thing you've got that thick touch of the butt there so that's what's going to be hitting the end so it's very simple um, we do have a third little rod wrap here so I'm just going to wrap up this other side of this towel just like so so as you can see there it's really really compact so considering the size of some of the rods that are in there um, so you've got your, your guides here sort of alternating um, those larger guides so they're both facing opposite directions um, so they're not um, going to be hitting each other um, and also yeah, minimizing the amount of space it takes up on the tube um, nice hard end on this end and also a nice hard end on this end so if you put that in the tube and it's banging around like nothing's gonna break so it's very important to make sure that you just got that hard end um, in your tube so what you want to do then is obviously put it in the tube so this one is a uh, sort of an accordion style so it's got two segments which come together so as you can see there it's nice and open and that's the other side which is just the top there so I'll just put that down here so what you want to do these ones have got like a little bit of foam in the bottom end just so there's a little bit of protection so essentially just sliding that rod all the way in there um, you can wrap, wrap these um, uh, rod butts um, depending on how much space is in your rod tube um, what I often do is I'll actually just put them in here like this and then depending on how much space I have because I travel with a lot of camera equipment generally I'm a little bit limited in what I can take um, as far as clothes so a lot of time I'll actually just stuff um, a lot of my clothes inside my rod tube to minimize movement as well um, so once you've done that so you've got um, your rod in there it's butted all the way down to the bottom and as you can see at the top here you've still got um, no tips protruding and you just want to slide the top of your rod tube on bring them all together like so now this is very important this part so you don't want any movement in your rod tube but you don't want to push down too hard that you're going to break something so if you just slide your rod tube until you find that firm stop 
And then a lot of them will have like little different holes um, so you can adjust them at different heights. So if you just have a look, get it down to a height where it's, it's not going to be pushing the rods you know, back into each other and um, exposing one of those tips and then just simply lock it up like so. And once you've done that, so you've got your rod tube, no movement, if you shake it around, there's no movement inside, so you can't hear it shaking. Um, that's very, very important. Um, now, if you know that's handled um, in a bad way by a baggage handler or something like that, um, none of your rods are gonna break. So you can take this on trip um, and not have any fears that you know, you're gonna rock up and one of your rods is gonna be broken. So um, I hope that's helpful. Um, definitely give it a try. Um, cheers guys. Thank you.